This is Daybreak on CNN for Friday, December 2nd. Good morning, everyone. NASA officials and the military are ready to try again this morning to launch the space shuttle Atlantis on a secret military mission. CNN's Tom Mentier joins us this morning. What are the chances for launch today? Well, I guess it's up to Mother Nature. Once again, the weather is the concern at the Kennedy Space Center. Yesterday, it was cloud cover. Today, it is the wind. Also, there was a leak of liquid oxygen as they were fueling the shuttle late last night. That has, we believe, put about a 50-minute delay into the countdown. The astronauts arrived at the launch pad, the five military astronauts, about uh, an hour ago, one hour later than they did yesterday. Uh, because this mission is classified, most of the timings uh, are guesstimates as when the astronauts arrive at the pad because the countdown clock is blank at the Kennedy Space Center and very few details are being put out. But there is grave concern about the weather conditions, especially the winds. Yesterday it was the winds aloft. Today it may be the winds down on the ground. CNN's John Zarelli is at the Kennedy Space Center and joins us this morning. Uh, John, the concern for the winds, uh, not only the winds aloft as it was yesterday, but uh, the winds at the shuttle landing site are also a problem, aren't they? Well, that's true. It's a combination of both. We can't, NASA can't exceed 24 knots, 24 knot winds at both the landing site and both and the launch pad. What you're concerned about is a crosswind at the landing site in case you had to make an emergency return to the landing site, but there is still concern for winds aloft. Just a few minutes ago, I was talking to one of the Air Force meteorologists who told me at 24,000 feet, we have wind shear again. And just real briefly, what's happening with wind shear is that as the shuttle moves up through the atmosphere, there are all kinds of aerodynamic stresses placed on the vehicle. And all of this is computed in in order for the shuttle to make a proper ascent from its, for its trajectory. Now, what we have at 24,000 feet is a change in wind speed and direction of about 17 knots in a 3,000-foot area. They're very concerned about that. They're watching that as well as these gusty ground winds that we have right now. So wind shear yesterday, wind shear again today a problem. The cold weather we have doesn't appear to be a problem. Tom? All right, John, we, of course, will continue to monitor the situation. Once again, it is the crosswinds uh, in case they have to return to the launch site in the first four minutes of flight that are a major concern. They can't have anything more than 14 mile an hour crosswinds. And as you could see in the picture from the Kennedy Space Center, it's definitely more than 14 miles an hour right now. The launch window opens at about 6.30. We, of course, will continue to pro provide live coverage of Atlantis's mission should it get off today. NASA officials are this morning keeping their eyes on the wind gauges at the Kennedy Space Center, hoping to launch the shuttle Atlantis, but fearing high winds. The launch of the secret mission, you may recall, was aborted yesterday because of foul weather. And little information is being released on it, but it's believed that today's countdown has been delayed by about an hour because of a fuel leak. However, NASA is still aiming for a launch time somewhere between 6.30 and 9.30 Eastern Standard Time this morning. Officials at the Kennedy Space Center are now looking at a launch time of about 8 o'clock Eastern for the shuttle Atlantis. A fuel leak during the night delayed the loading of fuel for that top-secret military mission. But the primary concern this morning, as it was yesterday morning, are the winds aloft, which have been increasing. Five astronauts are aboard the shuttle, ready for that launch. Good morning. NASA is on its second time around to try to launch the space shuttle Atlantis on a secret Pentagon mission. CNN correspondent Tom Mentier joins us with a live report on the second post-Challenger shuttle launch, Tom. Huh? Well, it is Mother Nature that is wrecking havoc with the plans of NASA again to put Atlantis into space. Just like yesterday, it was the weather that is causing the problems down at the Kennedy Space Center. But yesterday, it was a low cloud ceiling. Now it is what is above the ceiling, winds aloft. It is causing serious concern by NASA managers. It's something called wind shear, something we normally associate with low-level disturbances of the wind that airliners have problems with, but it also causes a severe problem for the space shuttle when it is moving through the upper cloud decks at high speeds. Uh, this is the uh, breakfast uh, this morning uh, that the uh, astronauts had. This is not a live picture. This is taped This uh, because of this being a Department of Defense mission. They have not sent us any live pictures of the astronauts uh, yesterday or today. Uh, they have gone through the breakfast now twice. Uh, they hope not to repeat it again and have it a third time. There is Commander Gibson in the middle. These are all military astronauts, all with top secret clearances. We also will not see any pictures inside the launch control or mission control in Houston because of the classified nature and not see the astronauts going into the space shuttle. CNN correspondent John Zarella is joining us now from the Kennedy Space Center. The weather is the concern down there. John, is it what's on the ground or what is uh, about 25,000 feet up? 
Well, what they're telling us now is no concerns with the winds here at ground level, at the launch pad, fine, at the shuttle landing site in case there was an emergency return here. No problem, no problem with crosswind this morning. Again, it is wind shear, as it was late in the launch window yesterday. Wind shear, a 17-knot variation in the winds at about 20 to 23,000 feet. And what that does is, as the shuttle goes up and you have the changes in direction and speed, it is putting stresses on the vehicle, particularly on the wing area and some of the crucial points. They don't want to launch in that kind of weather. They're, they're hoping that they can get this thing off this morning. They're saying after 9 o'clock it will even be worse and the winds at the ground are going to pick up. So they're going to try and get this thing off the ground before 9 a.m. Tom? All right, as the hour stands right now, it is the most optimum time for launching the shuttle. They said around 7 o'clock would be the best time. The window extends for another about two and a half hours exactly now, and uh, uh, as uh, the last half hour is going to be uh, a real problem with the winds, they say it's going to, the weather situation will get even worse. If they do not go today on Atlantis, they will probably take a one-day break, rest the people on Saturday, and then try again on Sunday. I'm Tom Intier. Good morning. The shuttle Atlantis is primed to go again this morning, but again, the weather eye out is off for winds aloft. CNN's Tom Intier brings us up to date. Tom? Reed, the countdown is on a hold right now. Sources say they have gotten down to nine minutes, but they're not doing much counting at the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis is attached firmly to the launch pad there and will likely remain there for at least another hour. NASA will probably have to start the clock in about an hour and 22 minutes or forget it for today and probably wait until Sunday to try again. But nobody is saying it can't happen. They are going to take the clock down to nine minutes, which makes it easier to start if they get a break in the upper winds, what is the real problem right now. The astronauts have been inside Atlantis for about four hours now. They left about five o'clock this morning uh, to take the nine-mile ride out to the pad. The five astronauts, all military for this de Defense Department mission. Navy Commander Robert Gibson is no stranger to launch postponements. As commander of Columbia, the 24th mission in 1986, he experienced a record seven postponements and had to board the ship six times before finally being successful in a liftoff. CNN's John Zarelli is at the Kennedy Space Center where he has been monitoring the weather situation. Uh, the winds aloft, John, uh, th that is a very serious problem. It's not something that's being taken lightly by NASA. That's right, it certainly is, and I don't think you can hear it, but right now the shuttle training aircraft, as it has all morning, is flying overhead. He's been doing touch and goes at the emergency landing strip here at Kennedy, just in case an emergency would force the crew to come back, and he's been flying at some pretty high altitudes, checking the wind shear. Uh, along with balloons, and we just had a report from NASA that uh, the latest Air Force weather balloon reports the wind shear is still unacceptable. Now, the wind shear is basically what is happening is that as the shuttle is ascending through the atmosphere, the computers are programmed for the resistance it will receive from the wind. Well, if you're getting a shear, as they are at about 25 to 28,000 feet, uh, the winds are changing speed and direction, about 17 knot changes. So the computers and the shuttle can't compensate for that. And you're going to be putting stress on the vehicle at all the key points, the structural points, and particularly on the wings. That was the problem late in the countdown yesterday where they began to experience the wind shear. And again today now, wind shear. Other than that, an absolutely beautiful day for a launch. The pictures would certainly be spectacular. Tom? Was saying, Hugh Harris was saying a few moments ago that they had a minor leak of uh, oxygen propellant uh, not serious enough to cause them to not go, but as the, as the hours continue, uh, is it a, a problem that they're going to have to deal with, uh, with the, the leak? Is it serious? I don't think they would have to worry about it today. I'm sure that if they decided to scrub today and then do a 48-hour recycle and come back on Sunday, that they would go ahead and try to fix that problem. They'd roll back the the rotating service structure back around the shuttle and go into it and uh, and try and solve that problem. They have the tire problem, of course, too. And the longer they delay, they may have to, to worry about that tire. There's a pressure leak in that tire, as you're well aware. But yesterday during a news conference, they said, well, we're not worried about it now. We're really not worried about it in the next uh, few days in case they have to postpone. Tom? All right, the next hour will tell the story whether Atlantis will try again on Sunday. Uh, they must start the, the countdown by 9.23 Eastern time or they simply run out of launch window. We, of course, will continue to monitor the situation and bring you updates on Atlantis throughout the day. I'm Tom Intier.
Well, at this moment, the countdown for the launch of the Space Shuttle Atlantis is in a nine-minute hold. This is the second day in a row NASA has tried to get that bird aloft. They failed yesterday. NASA officials say the weather remains a problem today and conditions apparently are not getting any better. CNN correspondent Tom Mintier is here with the latest on Atlantis, Tom. You know, when you look at the uh, situation at the Cape and you, and you see the blue skies in the background, it's hard to understand what the problem is with the weather, but it's something that you cannot see. NASA has been sending up weather balloons and been getting bad information back down from altitudes of about 28 to 30,000 feet. There is wind shear at those uh, altitudes and it can't launch the space shuttle with that kind of a problem going on. They are also running out of time. They have to be watching the clock very closely. The countdown, stuck now at nine minutes, must resume by 9.23 to get in before the 9.32 Eastern time closure of the window. The astronauts have been sitting in the sh shuttle Atlantis for about four hours now. They uh, left their uh, crew quarters uh, early this morning, as they did yesterday morning, and uh, it's uh, getting to be not a good time as they uh, walk out uh, to the Astro van and take the uh, long ride back out to the pad for uh, what they figured probably going in would be some time of sitting. Uh, Commander Robert Gibson is no stranger to the delays. As uh, commander of Columbia, he experienced a record seven postponements and delays and had to go out to the pad six times. So this is only his second time. CNN correspondent John Zarella is uh, live at the Kennedy Space Center this morning. And John, uh, the clock is not running there, but it is running here and it looks like uh, the possibility of Sunday is uh, looming on the horizon. Certainly looks that way right now, but 24 hours ago, oh, about 10 minutes ago, 24 hours ago, they had already canceled. They had already delayed and scrubbed. So we are hearing some spec... It's speculation only again, and it was the same speculation yesterday, that they could extend the launch window, perhaps by as much as one more hour, giving them until <coughs> roughly 10.30. The problem you alluded to uh, is, of course, wind shear. And what happens, to explain it briefly, is that as the shuttle ascends through the atmosphere, it is programmed for certain winds that they expect it will encounter. When they have the shear, they're getting a change in direction and a change in speed. And what that's doing is it could literally be buffeting the ship and hitting it at some of the stress points. And those stress points are not designed and not programmed to take that. An interesting thing is that if the trajectory of this mission had been different, we don't know exactly what's being carried in the cargo bay, but if the trajectory had been different, they say there's a possibility that they could have launched today and possibly yesterday. Trajectory meaning the angle where they want this shuttle to go. Uh, as I just mentioned, we can't show you what's in here because it's a secret mission, so we won't open the cargo bay. But what everybody has been saying is that we, we think this is a secret high-tech spy satellite that uh, will be used uh, to spy on, on the Soviet Union and even to, to be able to direct B, the, uh, the B-1 bombers and the stealth bombers in the future to future targets. Uh, uh, but also, it could also be used to direct troops on the ground and also to monitor, we understand, to, to monitor compliance with treaties by the Soviet Union. That's what's been speculated. That's what everybody thinks the shuttle is carrying, but nobody really knows, and the Department of Defense certainly isn't saying. Tom? John, with the three hours they have in the window, Part of the reason for that time constraint is that uh, at a certain time frame in the timeline of the mission, they have to launch the satellite and they have to be in the right position to do that. If they extend an hour, how does that change the timeline for putting the satellite out? Can it cause them problems later down the road tomorrow or the next day when they want to indeed launch the satellite? I don't think so. I, again, because it is a secret mission, they may have built that time in. They're telling us the launch window is 6.30 to 9.30, but indeed it may not be 6.30 to 9.30. They may have that extra latitude on the, on the high side of the window. So it may not cause them any problems. And again, when you're dealing with a spaceship like the shuttle, it's a little bit different than when you're launching on expendable rockets. You have a little more maneuverability and latitude once you get into orbit. So if indeed, uh, as I say, we haven't canceled yet, and as yesterday at this time they had, so I believe they're waiting for this last data from the weather balloons and the, uh, the plane that is up now, the shuttle training aircraft, uh, to get some, some final data before they go ahead and scrub or, or go with today's mission. Tom? All right, John, we'll continue to monitor the situation down there. About 22 minutes left in the window. That is, unless they extend it, or it will be Sunday before Atlantis makes its trip into space. We'll continue to monitor the developments at the Kennedy Space Center and bring them to you as they develop. I'm Tom Intier.
NASA, in trying to launch the shuttle Atlantis, is up against a launch window, which, as far as we know, Tom Mintier, is due to slam shut in about 15 minutes from now. That's correct, but things are improving now at the Kennedy Space Center. The weather, they say, the winds aloft, the wind shears that they were very concerned about are improving. The latest information from the weather balloons they have say that uh, the winds are improving and that uh, the chances are improving that they may get off today, that uh, there may be, a, may be a launch. Here's uh, Hugh Harris. Various systems. And, of course, the mission management team has the final say uh, to the launch director as to whether you pick up a count and proceed towards launch. One of the problems that uh, has been looked at during the, the preparations has been the temperatures on one of the water spray boilers, which is used for cooling uh, the lubrication oil and the other parts of one of the auxiliary uh, power units been determined that the uh, that that is operating uh, probably or uh, they have been looking at the uh, the temperatures uh, and the the sensors and the heaters and it has been determined that it's operating properly the uh, if we should pick up the uh, the count it is possible that a momentary hold could be caused though by the uh, uh, the temperature indications uh, however, those are not a, uh, a violation of the launch commit criteria. So Hugh Harris saying that uh, they are standing by and they could continue the count at any moment. The launch window closes at 9.32 Eastern Time. We will continue to uh, observe the situation and uh, bring you the updates as they become available. I'm Tom Mintier. All right, thank you, Tom. CNN correspondent Tom Mintier is uh, covering NASA's efforts to get the space shuttle Atlantis aloft, uh, trying for a second day in a row. Things looking up again, Tom? Thing, things looking go right now. Uh, right. The countdown has started at the Kennedy Space Center. They are down below five minutes now. They, it looks like that unless something happens in the next few minutes, that Atlantis will be launched. Rain valve is closed. T minus four minutes, 25 seconds and counting. The residual liquid oxygen now flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank to cool the engine system. There was some concern about the weather earlier. Winds aloft around 30,000 feet. The wind shear was a problem. They have been sending weather balloons up last night every few hours, but this morning it was almost as if every few minutes they would send a weather balloon up to report back. Just a few moments ago, the winds abated. They no longer had the wind shear problem, and they decided to start the count. The main engine being checked. The orbiter flight control surfaces, such as Elevon speed brakes and rudders, being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to ensure they're ready for launch. T-minus three minutes, 35 seconds and counting. All three engines uh, now being moved through a pattern uh, to verify their readiness to, and then they will be aligned to their start position. T minus three minutes, 19 seconds and counting. The last few minutes of the cliffhanger countdown that they were yeah, going T minus two minutes, 55 that, seconds. Uh, the, the window may close. The uh, it was scheduled to close at about uh, six minutes from right now, but uh, the countdown clock, uh, which uh, had been blank for uh, days, has uh, been lit up at nine minutes and is now moving all the way down, it appears. Uh, uh, once they go into the ground launch sequencer control, uh, uh, the, the computers will take over. Weather hold will be called uh, because of TAL sites. And we will hold the clock at 31 seconds. All right, at 31 seconds, the transatlantic abort site, uh, whichever one they're using, because it's a Defense Department mission, evidently has a weather problem. So it isn't just the weather at the Kennedy Space Center they're concerned about. They say they're holding around 30 seconds. It is retracting. The crew has been asked to check the, uh, the crew has checked the caution and warning. The clearing is complete. T minus two minutes, seven seconds and counting. T minus one minute, 57 seconds and counting. The crew has been asked to close the airtight visors on their helmets and start the oxygen supply to their pressure suits.
These pressure suits are something new uh, post-Challenger. There is now an escape system uh, during the level portion of flight that they can use. This will be the second flight where these suits are being used uh, in case of an emergency. T-minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. The clock will stop at 31 seconds because of a weather hold at the TAL sites. The, at T-minus one, uh, the ground launch sequencer will verify the shuttle main engines are ready to start. The liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure. By taking the countdown to 30 seconds, it means that uh, the condition at the uh, transatlantic abort site may clear. And counting. The sound suppression water system now armed. That uh, pre liftoff water is released at T minus 16 seconds. SRB joint heaters have also been turned off. Hydrogen. Uh, Burn igniters have been armed. T minus 40 seconds and counting. External tank heaters to ET to orbiter structural attachments turned off. T minus 31 seconds and holding. The launch director, Bob Seek, announcing that we have uh, uh, several minutes that we can hold at this particular point. Uh, we are in a hold because of weather conditions at the overseas uh, transoceanic abort sites. If we pick up the clock at this point, we would go for auto sequence start. Uh, this is when Atlantis so is... So what they have done, done they've taken Atlantis to the edge of the cliff. It's like taking a candle and lighting a match and waiting for the match to burn down to your finger. They are standing at the edge. CNN's John Zarelli is at the Kennedy Space Center and joins us now. John, it looks like uh, they're going to take it to the edge of the cliff and wait until the window closes. Well, they just said now we have a go for launch. I would assume they're going to pick up that count any second now. But uh, as you mentioned, the uh, transatlantic landing, alternative landing sites, uh, there's a weather problem at one of those sites. We don't know which one it is because this is a Defense Department, uh, Defense Department launch. Now, one now they're counting, Tom. Back to you. We have a go for auto sequence start. The SRB hydraulic power units have started and moving those engine nozzles T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We have a go for main engine start, seven, Six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the tower. through maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Three engines now at 65%. Atlantis been given a go at throttle up. All three main engines back up to 104%. Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Three good engines, three good APUs. Relative velocity about 2,900 feet per second. Downrange 12 nautical miles. One minute 50, three engines up at 104%. 
You can see the solid rocket boosters have just separated away from Atlantis. Atlantis now relying on its three main engines to reach the orbit. An unusually clear picture of the First separation. Stage performance nominal according to the flight dynamics officer that call made to the crew. They're now passing through 204,000 feet, downrange distance 46 nautical miles. They've been given a call indicating a two-engine capability to their primary overseas landing site. Now 55 nautical miles downrange. Three engines still up and running at 104%. Climbing at 1,500 feet per second, altitude 245,000 feet. If you have just joined us, that small white dot in the center of your screen is the Space Shuttle Atlantis. They have already gone through one of the most critical portions of the flight. The solid rocket booster separation occurred about a minute ago, and you could see the picture clearly as the solid rocket separated away from the shuttle. It's now relying on its own internal power of the three main engines. The external tank, the large cylinder, is still attached to the shuttle and uh, providing fuel for those three engines. Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Gary Cohen pulling their positions here in the control center, all reporting to go. Three good engines still up and running at 104%. Negative return call just went up to the crew. That indicates uh, they no longer have the capability to do a return to launch site abort. Seven nautical miles downrange. These pictures that you're seeing are being provided by special long-range cameras that NASA uses during the launch. The press to ATO call just uplink to the crew. That call indicates should they lose an engine, they would have uh, sufficient velocity to press toward uh, an abort to orbit uh, case. Now 210 nautical miles downrange. Atlantis once again passing another major milestone in its flight to space. Miko call just made to the crew. That call indicates they have sufficient velocity to press to main engine cutoff conditions even if they lose one main engine. Atlantis now passing through 365%. Uh, the group uh, 109 call just made to Atlantis. That call indicates that should they lose two engines, they would have the capability to make their transoceanic abort landing uh, on one remaining space shuttle main engine now passing through uh, 366,000 feet. All right, what you're seeing now is a live picture at the Kennedy Space Center, the smoke remaining from the uh, blast off that occurred a few moments ago. The countdown went several times into a stop mode because of winds aloft, wind Two, shear problems. One, and now let's go back and replay the launch for you. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the tower. This will be about the last time that we will see or hear from NASA because this is a secret Defense Department mission. Communication between the shuttle and the ground will be limited and it will be non-existent as far as the media is concerned. Believed to be the mission 
objective is to launch a lacrosse satellite, what is believed to be a lacrosse satellite, the first in a series that will be uh, used to help the B-1 and B-2 bombers as far as uh, guidance. It will also be used to help verify that the Soviets are adhering to the treaties that have been signed. And what it does, it provides better imaging for the look-down radar that is on board. Uh, it will see through clouds, it will defoliate trees and see through the leaves and work well at night. So these are things that the United States, as far as the intelligence gathering community, if it is indeed true that is the satellite on board, have not been able to do well up until now. Once again, Atlantis is on its way to orbit, on its way to a mission of launching a spy satellite. There will be a communications blackout for the next couple of days. It is believed that sometime, possibly Monday morning, unless there are problems, they will return to Edwards Air Force Base in California for a landing of Atlantis and the ending of this mission. Once again, a 15-ton satellite will be launched sometime in the next probably two or three days. If there is a problem with the satellite, they have the ability, once it has been deployed, to retrieve it. They would simply uh, use explosive bolts and knock off the solar arrays and reach out with the Canadian-built robot arm, pick up the shuttle at the uh, satellite and bring it back into the cargo bay for the trip home. It is a very, very expensive satellite, believed to cost about $500 million, so they have the option of bringing it back if it doesn't work right. We, of course, will bring you continuing updates throughout the day here on CNN on Atlantis's progress. Atlantis is off and running on its secret military mission in space. Liftoff was just about a half hour ago. CNN's Tom Mentir is here with more on the shuttle. Tom? The Atlantis launch was an on-again, off-again situation throughout most of the morning. Wind shear at about 25 to 30,000 feet was a serious concern by NASA managers as they made last-minute decisions on whether or not to go, and then a last-minute cliffhanger. The window was about to close at 9.32 Eastern Time, and they took the count down to 30 seconds. Then they had a problem at the transatlantic abort site, because this is a DOD mission, we don't know exactly where that is, but they had a weather problem there. A few seconds later, the weather cleared up, and it was on the way for the secret mission of Atlantis. The mission is expected to last several days, the exact duration, once again, a secret classified by the Air Force. The mission is believed to be, uh, the objective of the mission is to launch a new generation satellite, codenamed LaCrosse, we believe. It is the first in a series that will be put up over the Soviet Union. This one satellite, at a cost of about $500 million, will look at about 80% of the Soviet Union. Coming up in just a second, we're going to show you another view of the moment that everyone now waits for and holds their breath, breath for. This is the separation of the solid rocket boosters. An unusually close view as you see them jettison from the Atlantis and start to fall harmlessly back to Earth. SRB separation. Now 31 nautical miles downrange. There will be a complete news blackout for the next couple of days as they go about their secret mission. We will get a uh, warning about 24 hours in advance that Atlantis will be returning to Edwards Air Force Base in California. CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center now and joins us live. John, the view of the shuttle this time, especially the solid rocket separation, was uh, unusually clear. Certainly spectacular, a beautiful day for the launch. As you just mentioned, almost a complete news blackout. In fact. The last words by Mission Control were no problems encountered on way to orbit. And we're told there will be no post-launch news conference. And that's all we're going to hear, And as you mentioned, until about 24 hours before the shuttle actually lands. Now, one interesting thing that everybody's been talking about is the trajectory of the launch. That's the way that the shuttle went up into, into orbit. Uh, on most launches, we'll show you this model again, the shuttle begins what they call the roll program. And it's on the pad, and it sort of rolls around. And then it goes off in a direction sort of like this. Well, on this particular launch, it didn't do that. It began the roll program, and then it went almost almost straight up, as uh, one NASA official said that it uh, wasn't too hard to figure where it was going. On this videotape replay, you'll be able to see that quite clearly. It almost went straight up after it began the roll program, and you'll see that coming up just after it, uh, after it clears the tower here. It'll start its roll, roll over, as they call roll program. And there we go. And then it almost went straight up 
uh, usually they go off a little bit to the uh, to the southeast in this case straight up to the and then a little bit to the north an indication that indeed uh, this shuttle on its secret mission is probably as everyone has been speculating carrying a spy satellite uh, headed uh, for somewhere over the Soviet Union so again absolutely spectacular views and uh, a very interesting trajectory, one we don't get to see very often of a launch. Tom? John, there's more that we don't know than we do know about this mission. There, as you say, there's been a lot of speculation. Normally, uh, a satellite, especially a spy satellite, requires a polar orbit to see the Soviet Union. That's why the Vandenberg uh, Flight Center was built and then mothballed, because uh, they now have this type of satellite they can launch on the trajectory we saw this morning. Uh, will we see more of the uh, satellite launches of this type from uh, Kennedy uh, this next year? Oh, I think we will. We have a couple of, of more military missions in 1989. Uh, but one of the things NASA is saying is that, of course, as we get downstream a few years down the road, the Department of Defense is going to be going back to using expendable rockets. And they could launch, and they will be launching again from Vandenberg for those polar orbits. They can't get into a polar orbit with the space shuttle here at Kennedy. And as you said, that's why they used Vandenberg. Uh, they can launch from here if they don't need polar orbits, even with expendables, from right down the road at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Uh, it's a very, very difficult maneuver for the shuttle from here, and again, that's why Vandenberg. But we will see more Department of Defense missions from here as they work off the backlog of satellites that were built specifically to fly in the shuttle. That was because back before Challenger, the whole idea was that the shuttle was going to be the workhorse, the do-everything vehicle, and now, of course, we, it's been obviously tragically proven it can't do everything, and they're going to be going back to using expendable rockets to, uh, to launch a lot of the payloads. Tom? All right. Uh, Atlantis is on its way. NASA says they will not break the silence unless something goes wrong. Uh, the only time that might happen is when they have to possibly return early. After they deploy the satellite and uh, sit and, and fly alongside of it for a while, if it is not working properly, they will simply blow the arms off of it with explosive charges that are in the solar arrays, reach out with the robot arm, pull it back into the cargo bay, and then return to Earth possibly a little earlier than expected. But unless it stands right now, if everything goes well, the next time we will hear from NASA is when they make the decision that they are bringing Atlantis back to Earth probably 24 hours in advance for a landing at at uh, Vandenberg Air, or at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California and believed to be right now sometime Monday morning.